If you ask anyone around the world which country is leading the space race, they'd say the United States, without hesitation. And they'd be right. For decades, America has dominated space exploration. From landing humans on the moon to creating the most reliable rockets on Earth, the U.S. has been untouchable. But unfortunately, that's changing. And fast. A massive threat is emerging from China, and they're advancing more aggressively than ever. While they're pushing forward, our own leaders are holding back American companies with unnecessary regulations and stupid decisions. We'll talk about that in detail later. Before we go any deeper, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future updates. Now let's start with the biggest area where China is beating the U.S. SOC space stations. Years ago, China was banned from participating in the International Space Station program. Instead of giving up, they decided to build their own. Enter the Tiangong Space Station, China's station in low Earth orbit. Its core module launched in April 2021, followed by two research modules in 2022. It orbits at an altitude of roughly 340 to 450 kilometers above Earth. It is designed to accommodate three astronauts for up to six-month stays, and during crew rotations, it can support up to six. Compared to the International Space Station, the Chinese space station is far more modern and advanced. And this should worry the United States. The International Space Station might still be the largest and most famous space station ever built, but it's also outdated. It's a product of 1990s engineering that's been orbiting for over 20 years. Many of its systems are aging, and NASA plans to retire it by 2030. Meanwhile, the Chinese space station was designed and built in the last few years with new materials. The ISS started construction in 1998 and took more than 13 years and over 30 launches to complete. It cost more than $150 billion and still costs about $3.5 billion a year to operate. It weighs around 420 tons, contains 16 pressurized modules, and hosts up to seven astronauts. But almost everything about it, from wiring to control systems, was made in the early shuttle era. In contrast, the Chinese space station was completed in just 18 months, from its first module launch in 2021 to full operation in 2022. It consists of three modules, each around 22 tons for a total mass of about 70 tons. It orbits Earth between 340 and 450 kilometers, nearly the same altitude as the ISS, but uses modern thrusters to maintain its orbit automatically without relying on constant ground commands. The Chinese space station supports three astronauts for missions lasting up to six months and can hold six crew members during crew rotations. Its environmental system recycles 80% of air and water, significantly reducing resupply needs. The interiors are cleaner and brighter. In 2022, China carried out around 64 orbital launches. In 2023, that number increased to 67. And by 2024, China reached 68 orbital launches. Out of the world's 263 total launches in 2024, China alone was responsible for 68, more than a quarter of all launches. Now, here's where things get serious. If we remove SpaceX from the picture, the United States would be far behind China in launch numbers. In 2024, SpaceX alone launched 138 rockets, 132 Falcon 9s, two Falcon Heavies, and four Starships. That's more than double China's total. Without SpaceX, the U.S. would have had fewer than 40 launches for the entire year. This means that almost 80% of America's space activity now depends on SpaceX. Without it, the U.S. would already be behind China in total launch. And SpaceX isn't just launching more rockets. They're developing the most powerful one ever built, Starship. Standing 400 feet tall, it's taller than the Saturn V and designed to be fully reusable. Each flight aims to cut the cost of space access dramatically. Starship can carry more than 100 metric tons to orbit in a single launch. That's five to six times more than China's largest rocket, the Long March 5B, which can lift around 25 tons to low Earth orbit. By 2025, SpaceX has already conducted 11 Starship test flights. 
Each launch begins from Starbase, Texas, where 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster fire simultaneously, producing over 7,600 tons of thrust, more than double the power of NASA's SLS rocket. After liftoff, the booster carries the upper stage toward orbit before separating and flipping back toward Earth for recovery. This is where things get crazy. Instead of landing on a drone ship like Falcon 9, the super heavy booster aims to be caught mid-air by two massive steel arms attached to the launch tower, nicknamed Mikazilla. During some of the recent tests, SpaceX actually succeeded in catching the returning booster. The first time in history such a thing has been done. The precision required is incredible. A 70-meter-tall rocket returning from space has to align perfectly with two moving arms, descending at high speed, with only a few seconds of margin for error. No other company, not NASA, not China, and not Blue Origin, has ever even attempted this. The Starship upper stage itself is also unlike anything else in operation. It has six Raptor engines, three optimized for sea-level thrust, and three vacuum engines for use in space. It can carry more than 100 metric tons of cargo to orbit in one flight, and it could reduce the cost of launch to 100 times compared to traditional rockets. Musk has stated that the launch cost for the Starship could eventually drop to about $10 million per flight. On some occasions, Musk has even mentioned a target as low as $2 million per launch in the future. Once Starship becomes operational, it will completely change the space industry. It's designed to fly multiple times per week, possibly even daily in the future, while China's Long March rockets are still single-use. This difference is massive. SpaceX's Starship can deliver more cargo in one launch than China can in five or six launches combined. So when you look at the numbers, it's clear. SpaceX is carrying the U.S. space industry on its back. Without it, China would already be leading. But instead of supporting the company that's keeping America ahead, our officials are now making things harder for them. And that could backfire badly. Recently, NASA said that SpaceX is moving too slowly with its lunar lander for the Artemis program. Because of that, NASA decided to open the lunar lander contract to other companies, including Blue Origin. This is a big shift because back in 2021, SpaceX had already won the contract worth around $2.9 billion to land astronauts on the moon for Artemis III. Now, instead of focusing on helping SpaceX finish the job, NASA is spreading that same project across different companies like Blue Origin. Now let's be honest, no one else is close to SpaceX's level. Blue Origin hasn't even launched its new Glenn rocket yet. Its first flight has been delayed for years, while SpaceX has already launched Starship 11 times. Starship is bigger, stronger, and designed for full reuse. It can carry over 100 tons to orbit, while Blue Origin's future rocket is expected to carry half that at best. So, when NASA takes contracts away from SpaceX and gives them to companies that are still testing engines, it's not competition. It's slowing progress. This decision also makes no sense from a financial point of view. SpaceX's reusable rockets are saving NASA billions. A single Falcon 9 launch costs around $67 million, while NASA's own SLS rocket costs more than $4 billion per launch, and it's single use. Despite this, NASA keeps pouring money into outdated systems and now wants to weaken the one company that's actually lowering launch costs and increasing flight frequency. That's it for this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more updates.